I think it's actually good afternoon now rather than good morning. Um, so good afternoon, everybody. Um, I do actually come from a very far away country called New Zealand. Um, and um, part of my talk over here um, is to actually discuss what's going on at the New Zealand side of things. And, uh, and then, and then probably share a little um, for something um, for India in the future as well. Um, it's interesting that uh, when I came here and introduced myself to the chair, um, and, and he actually he actually saw my this thing and they said, "Ah, right, you do." And then he said immediately, "Short circuit ratios." And then, and then, and then interestingly, the second chair came about. And then, and then um, the first chair was introducing me to Professor Narsimhan. Um, and then immediately he said, short circuit ratio. Looks like Raidu equals short circuit ratio um, in this conference at the moment. Um, rest assured that I won't be going into technical details. I won't bore you with that. Um, I will talk about it in, in a very generalized manner. And then if you need details, please do go through my paper. Um, and then we can actually um, have a chat a bit more later if you want to. So before we go ahead, I really wanted to go through some of the contents. The contents are pretty general. Um, so we need to talk about New Zealand power system because you, um, many of you are very not aware of um, how we do things in New Zealand. And then second um, is how we are looking forward to 2050 and what are the new things that we are putting in. And then I will actually get into the short circuit ratio, uh, the project that we are doing over there on grid reliability and short circuit ratios were just, um, a, this is just a small part of the, some of the work that we do. So if you want to know how New Zealand is about, so, so that New Zealand comprises mainly of two islands and that's pretty much it. So if you would see like we have no neighbors, but then we do quarrel like hell with Australians. So if there are any Aussies, sorry. Um, we do, um, even though they are quite far away from us. So in terms of population, we are about five million. Um, so that accounts to about 50 lakhs in Indian, Indian uh, way of calculating. And, uh, and it, about, it is about the size of Uttar Pradesh. So just imagine 50 lakhs people living in just the size of in Uttar Pradesh. Um, and if you actually look at power systems point of view, we've got about 13 to 14,000 square kilometers, sorry, not square, uh, root kilometers of lines. Um, and then uh, we are a small islanded system, totally islanded. And then even inside the islanded, both the North Island and the South Island are islanded. They do run on different frequencies. That doesn't mean that you know, they both are on around 50 hertz, um, but one of them is a little less than the other one. Um, and, then, and then they are connected by a 650 kilometer HVDC link. Um, so it is the second most oldest HVDC link in the world. Um, so in, in, so, so um, we've actually got that um, continuously running since then. Um, if you look at uh, our peak power, it's about 6.5 gigawatts, um, and then approximately 40 terawatts um, of power per year, okay? Um, incidentally, the generation is actually quite remote in the area, but then with the, with the access of uh, renewable energy, the regeneration is actually coming up, as you could see uh, over here, on the northern side of the land, island. But, but historically, most of the generation, most of the hydro generation was around here, um, at the bottom of the South Island, okay? Um, in, in simple terms, you know, in, in, to give you a general idea on how big our industry is, uh, we have predominantly seven generation companies. We have 29 distribution companies. Uh, we have 11 industrial connections going through the transmission direct. And then we've got about 22 retailers um, basically, basically trying to get uh, the customer dollar, okay? 
So that's how it looks like. So wind energy. Um, so we've got about 17 farms um, with about 490 turbines. I wouldn't talk about the historical aspect of it. It's got an installed capacity of about 6, 690 megawatts. And um, supply is approximately 6% of New Zealand generation. It's been consented uh, to have more wind farms uh, in the next few years. Uh, they are either being constructed or not, and then the largest being 860 megawatts, which is being uh, developed at this stage. Um, this seems to be one of the future, which you will see that in a minute. So if you look at um, how New Zealand is going to go into 2040, um, so this is what it is. I can't, sorry, um, it's, it's a little hazy. I tried to redo those last night, um, but it still looks a little hazy. Um, so if you could say much, much of the, this is 2016, and 37% of the transport is totally oil-based, okay? And, and in 2050, we are trying to move approximately 13% uh, of that into electrification, um, into transport. Okay, you could you could ask me how I came about, and then I've got we've got some really good reasons for that, and then I can happily talk uh, talk to you about it um, when we have a discussion. Um, the electricity demand, we assume that um, incidentally it is supposed sorry. Incidentally, it is supposed to go, um, so, so increase by about 25%, that is the historical increase. Um, but with transport moving, we need to have about 61% of energy uh, demand to be increased. So what that means is we need 60 terawatts of generation by 2050, okay? Um, the estimates are about 16 terawatt um, of distributed solar. Um, as if you could see over here, um, and then the rest should actually come from the utilities care, um, renewable energy, and whatever that is. So how are we moving um, towards 2030? Uh, so this is, uh, the, the, the bottom things that you see over there are basically oil and coal. And we are retiring them by 2030, so, so they are going away completely. Um, and, then, and then the rest of them uh, all the renewable energy is being increased. So we have a target of achieving 91% uh, renewable energy by 2025, and we are well uh, on target. And we are close to 89% at the moment in terms of renewables. So how does, it, how does the New Zealand electricity look like by 20, 2050? So this is what you see in 2015, the one on the left-hand side. Um, and then slowly it's going to go into complete renewables, as you can see, like the 32% hydro, 20% geothermal, um, 19 wind, uh, 17 microsolar, 6% utility solar, 5% um, marine, and then, and then a little bit, 1% of our grid. Um, incidentally, we don't have feed-in tariffs. You know, the New Zealand government doesn't do anything for the people. Um, it's the people who actually decide to do uh, to the planet, and that is the interesting part of um, part of New Zealand government, um, um, because they know that the citizens will will actually take care of the planet, and that's why there are no feed-in tariffs uh, that we get, and we probably pay one of the uh, for installation at least for solar one of the most expensive. It costs close to four to five dollars. Uh, a kilowatt hour to install solar in New Zealand. Uh, while uh, Australia had gone on par to about a dollar Australian per kilowatt hour uh, for installation now. Okay. So that's how it looks like. So enough of um, historical aspect of, of New Zealand. Um, so what is the focus of this paper is basically to look at um, New Zealand grid's short circuit ratio at nodes that connect uh, future generation. And then uh, we wanted to actually look at uh, the fault right through performance and then see 
um, whether the New, New Zealand grid is a V grid, because historically it's been taught that uh, New Zealand grid is a V grid. Okay? Um, we haven't actually come to that point yet. So if you are not sure of what a short circuit ratio is, so this is the only one equation that you will see in my presentation. Um, it's basically a, the short circuit level at a particular bus without a wind turbine being connected. And then you've got, you, you've got the wind turbine nameplate rating. Okay, so one caveat over here. Uh, sorry, um, if you are interested in short circuit ratios, the best paper I would uh, suggest is that reference nine, uh, which is by FERC uh, in 2017. Um, it is actually readily available to everybody. Uh, it's not an IEEE publication or anything like that, or even it might be an IEEE, but then it is available from the FERC website. So you can actually go ahead and then do that. The difference is SCC is actually in MVA, and SWF is actually in megawatts. So please do remember that. So what did we do? Um, so uh, from, the, from the project science of it, we um, actually do use uh, what the system operator uses um, um, as a model. Uh, so we do, we do use a realistic model. Um, and then the power flow studies that we do is an, is an actual snapshot of the time that we run. So, um, so we do have a system operator um, computer available for us to actually do system studies. Um, and then it already has existing incomes in the model, and we're not actually looking into that, and it is not the focus of this paper. So what did we do? We actually looked at all the short circuit capacities um, on all the nodes. So we've actually measured between 222 to 3376. And then what we did was we picked out some of the um, nodes that the wind farms are actually coming up in the future. Um, so three nodes in the North Island and two nodes for the South Island. We have actually done quite an extensive study beyond that, but for the paper we just choose only five to discuss. And then uh, the short circuits in this paper, um, capacities in this paper ranged between 238 to 367. And then we did um, connect uh, wind farm rating models between 15 megawatts, so being very small, 250, which is the current one. We, had, we didn't, uh, the, we've, uh, we've actually done some studies with the largest one, but then that is not part of the paper uh, in there as well. So we ended up um, short circuit values between 1.59 to 24.48, okay? Um, so, oh cool, thank you. So, so without going too much details into, into the, thing, into the um, aspects of the thing, so this is what it looks like. So uh, the SERs, uh, the short circuit ratios go down quite drastically. Um, beyond a certain value of uh, wind farm output. And it doesn't really matter what kind of SC levels they are, the short circuit levels they are, they quite um, quickly converged um, to beyond, beyond a certain value. And in over here, it seems to be close to 60 megawatts. Okay, that is for New Zealand standards. Okay. The interesting part of you of these um, is when you actually simulate a fault, um, so this is what happens um, at the POC. The, the, at the POC, the black one is as basically the POC. Um, and then the voltage shoot up um, beyond five, SCR of five is quite drastic, as you could see over here. And then um, the worst thing that we see is the wind turbine terminal, okay? Um, it's way, way, way more. Um, than, uh, than the SCRs, and that becomes a very important issue for um, over voltage right throughs um, for wind turbines to actually do. So, so um, we haven't looked at whether we need to change protection or, in, or anything like that at this level, but uh, we are looking at all kinds of options. So the restoration times have actually increased um, by a lot of time as well. So if you could see with POC, the restoration time is around you know, 500 milliseconds. 
But then with wind turbine terminals, it's actually close to 750 to 800, so which actually increases the restoration time by a long margin. Um, and this is something that we need to actually do, look into more. So what are the observations that we've got? Um, even if the short circuit ratios are the same, the behavior is pretty much similar, although the short circuit capacities are different. Um, and, and that is what we found out. And even if you have a rigid system, which is a short circuit ratio of uh, 22, restoration times are approximately four times longer than whatever we actually anticipate on a typical fault studies. And then the third one is voltage spikes are at least 45% more uh, for lower SCRs, so that becomes a, a very big issue for us to think about. And then the spikes are works with the wind turbine terminal um, than the POC even even um, at an SCR level of 10, which is supposed to be a rigid system, okay? Um, restoration times are higher at wind turbine terminal level than POC as well. So what do we conclude from here? Uh, for New Zealand grid, if there is anything more than 60 megawatts connected, wind turbine connected, then we have to do a serious study. Uh, for fall, fall right through is a big issue uh, that we need to think about and needs further investigation every time. And then um, SER of three um, or less is taken, taken, taken into consideration as a V grid. And for us, it seems to be um, SER less than five. Um, we can consider some nodes to be weak. And, and then they are a good way to analyze grid stability and it is important for us to do, do that um, for future connections. Thank you.